Hello there. How's it going? Now I hope you're enjoying learning as much as I'm enjoying teaching you all these new things. Okay. If you look around you and identify 10 things, they will either be things that are naturally occurring or they may be man-made. For example, trees are nature's gift to us. The air that we breathe but cannot see is again a part of nature. Isn't it? But the car that your dad has or the computer or laptop in which you're watching this video is man-made. But to make these objects, man needs some or the other natural resources. Well, speaking of natural resources, we will study these very important natural resources in this video. We will be learning about coal, petroleum, and natural gas. There are so many natural and man-made things that we use in daily life. For example, the air we breathe, the water we drink, soil, minerals are all useful to us. And so are man-made things like modes of transport, clothes and infrastructure. But can natural resources last forever? Especially with the over-increasing population? Is there a chance that a day might dawn that we run out of pure air, clean water and fertile soil due to constant human activities? Well, based on the availability of various resources in nature, natural resources can broadly be classified as inexhaustible and exhaustible. Let us learn more about them. Now, inexhaustible natural resources are those which are present in nature in unlimited quantity and are not likely to be exhausted by human activities. For example, sunlight and air. On the other hand, exhaustible natural resources are those which are present in nature in limited quantities and they are at a risk of being exhausted by human activities. Forests wildlife, minerals, coal, petroleum and natural gas are some of the exhaustible natural resources. Well, let me tell you, there are several ways to classify natural resources, including where they come from and if they are renewable or not. For example, if natural resources come from living things or organic materials, then they are considered biotic resources. Biotech resources include plants, animals and fossil fuels. The three fossil fuels which are very useful to mankind are coal, oil and natural gas. And fossil fuels are classified as biotic resources because they were formed from the decay of organic matter over millions of years. And on the other hand, abiotic resources originate from non-living and inorganic materials. For example, Air, sunlight and water are abiotic natural resources. What's more, minerals like gold, copper, iron and diamond are also considered abiotic. In case of inexhaustible resources, mankind need not worry about emptying them by overuse. These will naturally be replenished. However, it is the class of exhaustible resources that we actually need to use very carefully and frugally. Because like I told you, these were formed from the decay of organic matter over millions of years. And if we run out of them, you can only imagine how many generations will pass until we have them back again. Let me give you an example to show you how we may run out of these precious exhaustible resources. Take a few containers and fill them with either peanuts or popcorn or toffees. You choose. Now divide the students in your class into groups of seven each. Then divide each group of seven into three subgroups containing one, two and four students. These are the first, second and third generations respectively. Now these subgroups represent the consumers. And if you see, the number of consumers is growing with every generation, right? Now give one full container to each group. Now ask the consumers of the first generation 
from each group to consume eatables from the container on the table. Once the first generation is done eating, ask the second generation to consume the eatables. Now do remember to check the availability of consumables after every generation is done consuming how much ever they need. Now after the first and second generations are done consuming the eatables and if anything is left, ask the third generation to eat from their containers. Finally observe whether all the consumers of the third generation got the eatables or not. Also observe if anything is still left in any of the containers. Well, this was just an example to draw parallels with the exhaustible natural resources that are available to mankind. The eatables in the containers are similar to exhaustible natural resources like coal, petroleum or natural gas that are available to us. If you observe within the groups that you formed, certain earlier generations may have been greedy, leaving very little for the next generation. But in some other group, the earlier generations could be concerned about the coming generations and leave some eatables for them. Well, are the present generations of man being greedy or concerned about the generations to come? We only have limited natural resources and many generations to come. Will they have enough? I guess only time and our attitude towards consuming these exhaustible resources will tell. Let us learn about some exhaustible natural resources like coal, petroleum and natural gas, which were formed from the dead remains of living organisms, that is fossils, and hence these are known as fossil fuels. Let us begin with coal. Coal is a fossil fuel and is as hard as stone. Coal comes in several different forms, from hard black rocks to soft brown dirt and is mainly composed of carbon. But how was coal formed in nature? Well, the process of conversion of vegetation into coal is called carbonization. And let me tell you the story of how it was formed. It's very interesting. About 300 million years ago, that is probably when dinosaurs roamed the earth, there were dense forests in low-lying areas on earth. Those forests got buried under the soil due to natural processes such as flooding. As more and more soil deposited over them, they were compressed and the temperature also rose as they sank deeper and deeper. And as the process continued, the plant matter was protected from biodegradation and oxidation, usually by mud or acidic water. More layers of soil were deposited on these buried forests in due course of time. Those plants were converted into coal due to intense pressure and heat inside the earth. The buried plants underwent carbonization and changed into coal. When coal is burnt in air, it releases heat and produces carbon dioxide gas. Basically, carbon mixes with oxygen to release carbon dioxide. Now, like I told you earlier, all these exhaustible natural resources are extremely useful to us. Let me list a few uses of coal. As you already know, it is used as a fuel and that is because it generates a lot of heat. Coal is also used to generate electricity. Most coal is transported by trains to power plants from the coal mines where it is burned to make steam. The steam turns turbines which produces electricity. Now, coal was used as fuel in steam engines. Also, most of the thermal power plants still use coal as a fuel. Coal is still being used as kitchen fuel in some households, dhabas and restaurants. Coal is processed in industry to get some useful products such as coke, coal tar and coal gas. Let us know more about these products one by one. But we shall learn about it only in the next segment. So join me then. See ya. Tutomate. 
For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.